Rocks. And somebody else, by the way, who likes to talk even when she shouldn't is Sharon Angle. And Lewis, try to get John Ralston on the phone. This is the guy who uh, released these tapes of Sharon Angle trying to push the uh, Republican candidate out of the race. She said, well, let, let, we'll get to that. Sharon Angle has said a bunch of things recently. Number one is she said Sharia law has taken hold here in the U.S. Now, if you didn't know this, don't feel bad. I didn't know either. She was asked about the Fox News majority shareholder funded Muslim community center. You might know it as the Ground Zero Mosque. And she said, you know what? We're talking about a militant terrorist situation, which I believe isn't a widespread thing, but it is enough that we need to address and we have been addressing it. Dearborn, Michigan and Frankfurt, Texas are on American soil and under constitutional law, not Sharia law. And I don't know what happened in the United States. It seems to me that there's something fundamentally wrong with allowing a foreign system of law to even take hold in any municipality or government situation. What is she talking about? Sharia law has taken hold in Dearborn, Michigan and Frankfurt, Texas. What what evidence is there of this? That there's many Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan. If I go there, will will every woman be walking around in a burqa? And if they don't, will they be punished? stoned? You know, she said on many occasions also she doesn't make backroom deals. I've actually got clips of her saying that. And when you hear these clips, be aware that these have not been doctored. This is really Sharon Angle saying she doesn't believe in backroom deals. My detractors say, Sharon, we don't agree with you, but you're consistent. You don't make backroom deals. And you don't make backroom deals. Well, you know what? It turns out she tried to make a backroom deal to try to get her Republican opponent out of the race. And I apologize for the poor audio. If this wasn't just a gold mine, I wouldn't even bother playing it. Let's take a listen. Scott, if you, if you can be the reason she gets an office, she can assist you. And you will have some access to her, and she will be able to help you. I, I will do anything that I can personally for you. But ultimately, if she wins, you get something for yourself. And first of all, you support the person who's going back there. You have access to her. She aids you in your goal. She will do so much more for you than if neither one of you wins. But that's really all I can offer to you is whatever juice I have, you have as well. So if you, if you didn't, the audio is poor and I apologize. She's saying she's offering juice to her Republican opponent. She will give him whatever juice she can if he drops out and she gets elected. You want to see the myth? I have juice with the myth. I go to Washington, D.C. now and I say, I want to see Jim DeMint. He's right there for me. We know, we know. She knows Jim DeMint. Uh, and by the way, she didn't say that she is going to offer uh, her opponent Jews. I want to make that absolutely clear. I know people people may be wondering about that from the audio. Sharon Angle, as crazy as she did, did not offer Jews to her Republican opponent for getting out of the race. Right. As far as I know, Lewis. Right. But but who wouldn't want a few Jews? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, certainly, as we know, if you're going to be uh, seeing Jim DeMint because Jews are in control of government, as, as we heard through the Rick Sanchez bit, um, that that's just one of the areas where certainly Sharon Angle may be trading in Jews. Now, speaking of Jim DeMint. Jim DeMint is now saying gays and unmarried pregnant women shouldn't teach in public school. They just shouldn't be allowed to teach. If someone is openly homosexual, they shouldn't be teaching in the classroom. That's what he said. And he holds the same position on an unmarried woman who's sleeping with her boyfriend. She shouldn't be in the classroom either. Controversy over DeMint's position on this issue first arose in 2004 during a Senate debate. He was asked whether he agrees with the state party's platform that says openly gay teachers should be barred from public school. He says he agrees because the government shouldn't be endorsing certain behaviors. He should, they shouldn't be endorsing certain behaviors. It's amazing. You know, Lewis, uh, I was thinking along these same lines, people with speeding tickets shouldn't be allowed to teach public school because that could be perceived as, as the, the government endorsing the behavior of speeding, don't you think? With outstanding speeding tickets or, or just... Any speeding tickets. Well, you know, you could be ex-gay. So I guess, you know, in that case, if you were ex-gay, if you, if you have had speeding tickets, I don't know. I don't know. Certainly no active speeders because it might be interpreted that the government is endorsing that kind of behavior. How far are we going to take this? What does he say next? That uh, Muslims and Jews should not be teaching in public schools? Right. I mean, because some Muslims, we know of at least some Muslims who have committed terrorist acts. And uh, the government can't endorse that behavior. And speaking of crazies, a, a couple things on the Westboro Baptist Church. Annette Ridley from uh, one of our Ohio TV affiliates emailed me and said, Shirley and the Westboro Church bunch did a drive-by protest in her hometown on their way to Washington. And uh, I want to play for you. This is amazing. 
When we had Shirley Phelps Roper on the show a couple of weeks ago to talk about the Quran burning, I pointed out that she seems to stare into the camera during interviews and only blink about once a minute. And she didn't really like it too much, but she kind of played it off. I guess a, a couple of people have picked up on the fact that in t inter TV interviews, a lot of the times, it looks like you don't blink at all. You just blink about once a minute. And people are wondering if you're on a specific type of medication or if you're just holding your eyes open. How do you do that? <laughs> well, every once in a while, it's not, not so much these days, but I used to have allergies, but as you get older, <laughs> your allergies kind of burn out. Right. So I might take, um, you know, an allergy uh, med, but I really don't have to do that anymore. So, I've gotten old enough to where most of these things don't really have any impact on me. So you're just able to stare no, right I into mean, the camera. I don't take meds. Okay. So it seemed like she just kind of played it cool, right? She wasn't too bothered by it. Five emails I got from people saying, you know what? She is now wearing sunglasses in every interview. And I looked this up. This is amazing. She did a couple of interviews, and it's true. There was one on CNN. There was, there's a bunch of these on YouTube from the last week or so. She's wearing dark sunglasses in every single one of them. Now, mind you... She is outdoors, but I did research. I have not found a single instance of her wearing sunglasses during an interview up until the last week. Is it possible, Lewis, that I hit a nerve with Shirley Phelps Roper and her, her non-blinking? Well, we won't know for sure, but it sounds like it. it. It absolutely does. It really does. Pretty funny. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll talk to Congresswoman Donna Edwards coming up next. Of course, on the bonus show, the emergency bra story and a time when I had to be transferred from a job because of anti-Semitism. Stay tuned. Midweek Politics with Dave Packman on MidweekPolitics.com. Midweek Politics is made possible in part by the Daily Hampshire Gazette and GazetteNet.com, connecting our communities with local news and information. By DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at DIFDesign.com. To find out more about underwriting Midweek Politics, visit MidweekPolitics.com.